Hello everyone, welcome back to a new YouTube cast. Today we're going to be watching a game between Chat Marine and two Isengard. Now these are of course two uh, two Smurf accounts. Chat Marine is Hero Marine and two Isengard is Hearthstone. So myself, we're going to be uh, having a look at a little game that I played myself on the ladder recently. That was very interesting. Now we see Eternal Empire is a very large map easily defendable natural with these rocks easily defendable third with a ramp leading up to it and a little bit of a rocks to even tighten this choke means that the first three bases are extremely easy to defend now if you look at the fourth base uh s similar fashion also very easy to defend just a ramp leading up to it and a an area that's hard to reach for any kind of main army you have to make a a big swoop around on this part of the map basically to be able to reach that area so a very powerful defensive map which makes this especially good for we've seen mech styles being used here against protos we've seen battle cruiser styles being used here against protos as well we've seen basically a lot of cool stuff from terran who turtle but we we haven't really seen a lot from toss no 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 big uh you know air toss plays in pvt yet but Perhaps it will be a little bit different this game as we do have a Barracks first opener. This was, I believe, actually it was Cast first. With a, with a Reaper opening up, going into a command center uh, relatively quickly. And uh, two Isengard opening up with a second pylon in the bay, main base. Now, usually if you see a second pylon in the main base uh, at a high level, mean stargate majority of the time because if they weren't playing stargate they would almost always want to wall down on their low ground so um, if you're you know if you're a beginning caster and you see that you'd be like oh ooh, by a second pylon in the main probably means stargate now of course you also have protos players who who know that terrans know that and they'll try to trick their opponent with that they put a second pylon in the main base and boom just like that start a twilight count so now the reason that's not safe is against Hellion, like four Hellions, for example. If you don't have a wall at the front, it becomes very difficult to do anything. Now, to Isengard tried to scout with his probe, see exactly what was going on, see if there was going to be a factory there. Another thing that scouting with the probe at that timing does, is it allows your adept to move across the map. If the Reaper is at home, it means your adept can safely move across the map without the Reaper entering your main base. And if the Reaper isn't at home, then your probe basically just does the job of the adept right like he will be able to gather a lot of information for you now to isengard has the adept on the low ground reaper jumps into the main this could get a little bit dangerous here as being out of position with an adept uh, could lose him one or two reapers but chat marine decides or hero marine decides to not go for that and instead just leaves trying to uh, keep his reaper alive did get the, the scout off i believe on the stargate so notice there's an oracle heading his way now what are we seeing from uh, from hero marine starting a cyclone as well as a viking a very common response to that stargate opener whether it's phoenix or oracle it's nice to have some defense ready and the cyclone and viking provide a little safety marines will be located in one base usually in the mineral line to prevent any kind of oracle damage from happening yeah there we go moving it slightly closer there and uh and then the cyclone and viking in the main trying to zone out the oracle now marine slightly out of position so two isengard will be able to take out one two maybe even three three SEVs. so that's a good start usually uh protos gets maybe one kill uh, but it's very dangerous to go in there with the oracle because there might be a mine right so you always want to be very careful as the protoss player now we see the reaper once again making the big journey into the main base of the protoss player <coughs> we'll be able to spot a follow-up if there was anything uh, worth mentioning in this main base um, what did you see exactly only saw the two extra gateways but missed the robotics facility which was the real clue here it's a big tell fast robotics facility probably means uh, gonna be going into quick colossi of some sort now Immortal gets Chrono boosted, that's for safety purposes. A lot of the time when Terrans open up Cyclone Viking, they can get, for example, a tank and another Viking afterwards, and then you see them do a push with a lot of Marines, maybe two, three SCVs. Um, try to do some damage, try to cancel the third base of the Protoss player that went up extremely fast this game. 
Uh, we see Chad Marine only, uh, or Hero Marine only sticking to a single Viking, single Cycler, and then going into a Raven, which is an interesting call because usually Ravens aren't really used against Phoenixes. They die very fast against them. Um, their harassment isn't quite as good because usually what you can do with a Raven is you just kind of idle it in this dead space against Robo or Twilight Openers. And then whenever you have energy, you put down a turret over here or you fly in the main, put a turret down there. And the Protoss continuously needs to leave a lot of Stalkers in both areas. But of course with Phoenixes, that's different because a Phoenix can just kill a Raven. So not quite a similar... Uh, Sim similar power in the harassment there. Now, Hero Marine is still going to try to harass a little bit with it at least as he sends out his Raven. At the same time, we have a Robotics Bay follow up here for to Isengard. Um, he's also getting a Forge and double gases on his third base. Now, he did spot that there's a third CC, so that's the reason why we're seeing those fast gases. You can only really do this kind of stuff if you know your opponent is playing a very economical opening, delaying stim, delaying combat. Usually any kind of stim combat shield push would hit around 620 to 630, maybe 640 if it's a little late. But in this case, because it was a triple CC opener, barracks 2 and 3 get delayed and thus the stim push also gets delayed. Now, Phoenix has managed to spot out this Viking, I believe it flew through either observer vision or through tower vision so uh, pretty nice win there for uh, to Isengard who isn't aware yet that there's a raven in the in the top left it's an interesting play we also see something interesting coming out of to Isengard as he added a second stargate and starts saving up phoenixes now this could lead either into sky toss or into a very big eight gate mass phoenix colossus attack basically with plus one or one one upgrades where you completely skip a twilight council and you're really just focusing on killing all anti-air and maybe if even lifting marauders with your stargate units. but as we see a very very fast fourth phase this most likely will result into uh yeah honestly into uh air toss we don't have a plus one upgrade yet that's all because usually with display if you're getting a lot of phoenixes you obviously want plus one on your phoenixes do a lot of extra damage fleet beacon goes down either for phoenix range or for carrier slash tempest raven starts moving on the map as well this is really cool raven has a lot of energy saved up for well almost four turrets at this point we'll be able to use them as hero marine is pushing across the map um, to Isengard is of course aware that the push is happening with the revelation of the Oracle wearing off just now and this is interesting we see the the Raven is going into the natural and then we'll put two more turrets most likely into the main base Phoenix are a little bit preoccupied right now though as um, they actually need to be dealing with this there's a little push here but there's so many Phoenixes that can just lift all the Marauders 10 Phoenix against 10 Marauders Oh, a lot of Marauders going down very quickly. Mines getting destroyed as well. Another Marine gets lifted. And this is really the power of the Phoenix. If you hide them for as long as Isengard has, then, uh, yeah, it, de it definitely could be that you walk into a, a bit of a trap. And that's what Hero Marine did. The fourth base, of course, is a, a massive honeypot. And he's like, ooh, I want to attack that. And then all of a sudden, there's that many Phoenixes. So attacking becomes really difficult and very dangerous. Because if you lose a fight against Phoenixes and you lose it hard, you're just gonna get uh, picked off as you run back and phoenixes will be able to do a lot of damage cyclone gets picked up for free as well we see one more oops or more observers one more marine here as well which uh is looking to die here starts the carrier production that's odd this is something that is very uncommon currently in tvp um and it's probably only possible on a map like this and maybe purity and industry one of the newer maps in the map pool now in order to play this um you're gonna need a lot of cannons honestly you're gonna need a lot of disruptors ideally you get storm but the problem with getting storm is that it's quite a journey from where we are currently you need twilight council and templar archives and start researching storm so it's very far away it's quite expensive and uh, when you're opening carriers you always need to think of hey what what's gonna you know basically kill me next which could be anything as well so definitely uh a very dicey situation for the Protoss player always need to be on his toes for the Terran on the other hand he feels like he's on a bit of a timer like if he gets seven eight carriers out like all of a sudden you're you're looking at a sky toss army and a lot of Terrans aren't quite aware quite what they need to do against sky toss. like do, do I get mass marines well that would suck against storm or colossi do I get ghost viking well I'm not sure how great it is like maybe liberators for the splash damage against interceptors 
there's many options there and um, if you haven't played this scenario before it can be quite difficult now we see a lot of cannons a lot of batteries going down here for two Isengard and um, he needs to because his army is very immobile and we'll have a difficult time splitting it up like the phoenixes are really the only thing that can realistically split up and still keep some of its relevancy basically you know? one phoenix two phoenixes do go down here a little bit of harassment one more phoenix goes down so three phoenixes die against the mine a couple of vikings two more auto turrets get put down this raven uh, signed well basically his, his own death path here but you know what you can come and get me with your phoenixes i give up on life and so it will be as the phoenixes come in they got this raven phoenixes do have range do have plus one finish as well second cyber core is on the way first cyber core just finished with its plus one no plus two started how many carriers is there there's five carriers currently and this is very scary now for two isengard there's no real information no tag on the army um and all of a sudden there's a big attack into the natural nothing really there to deal with it mm. phoenixes colossus carriers going forward and Hero and Marine probably could have attacked this fort base, but because of the cannon count decides not to go for it. More cannons being built in that in that third base as well. Colossus and Phoenixes cleaning up this little army that was here. Probably should tuck it away slightly further here, try and get some more kills. At the same time, Hero Marine is moving up this ramp. How many Phoenixes still remaining? Almost no Phoenixes remaining. Hell, no Phoenixes remaining. Only seven carriers against eight Vikings. It's not a fight that the Viking player can actually win, so will need to retreat there and all things considered how the start of this fight went where two Isengard got completely surprised this wasn't half bad honestly like this was this was kind of okay this was a this was a good fight Yunus lost this slightly in favor of hero marine but the income has been a bit better all game long for two Isengard he has a good setup on this on this fort base with lots of cannons the only thing he's really lacking at this point is vision there's no vision on the map he's trying to get some vision but uh, he's struggling to get it, Pylon does help out, uh, some zealots being sent on the map just as sacrificial lamps trying to get some vision there as well. Good EMPs on the cannons by Hero Marine who will be able to take all of those out, or well, will be able to take out 3-4 cannons at least. Might come back later to finish the job but it's like the the head of the, the snakes, you know, you cut off one, seven new grow. I'm not sure what kind of snake that is but you know, that's a, a myth somewhere leave down in the comments exactly what who, who is the snake lady where you cut off the snakes and then they come back so another zealot gets sacrificed for some vision here as the terran is happily expanding look at this more command centers coming down liberator production starting as well plus two air weapons is about to finish so even though air toss is being played actually the terran is pulling ahead in air upgrades currently the only thing i'm worried for for the terran right now is that uh he doesn't really have enough anti-air, right? There's 12 marines, there's 14 vikings against 10 carriers. The 15 marauders make very, very little sense to me. Like, what are these marauders here for, really? There's no colossi left, there's one immortal and three disruptors. You're basically just, you know, just wasting a lot of supply into units that don't actually do anything. Good move here by Hero Marine, who finds a couple of carriers left alone. Uh, rest of the carriers do join up, and... This fight ends up being pretty okay for two Isengard to take out five, six, well all the Vikings actually, only losing two carriers here for his troubles. All of the disruptors are still alive, will most likely fall at this point. Not a single disruptor shot does go up, but there's just not enough anti-air. That's what I was talking about, all of a sudden there's just ten marauders here that can't really shoot up. Hero Marine, Hero Marine. Did you not know, marauders can't shoot up. Of course it's weird as well, I mean, if you have a ranged attack, why can't you just shoot up? Just aim it to the sky, mate. Marauders, of course, not the brightest of guys. A bunch of guys that... You know, some, some, some hardcore criminals. Gotta be careful there with them. Don't want to give them the most powerful weapon. Now, we do see more turrets going up. Mines being placed around. And lots of command centers being built. Now, you might be wondering... Why is 2 Isengard not attacking? It's because he has so much supply stuck into the Stargate. So, even though the supply looks good... Like, this is, this is basically... You know, 20, 22 supply right here... Uh, 21 supply right there together with the disruptor that is stuck in production building so supplies are really even there's a lot of turrets which will be able to take down the interceptors and that's really what it's all about here it's like you can't really kill the carrier as the turn you can definitely kill interceptors as you can see interceptor count quickly dwindling going down to 40 43 starting from 70 
Um, so basically Hero Green here is trading real units for interceptors. And uh, usually that is a, an, an okay-ish trade, right? You, you see uh, unit loss is relatively even. Right now we have 30 interceptors left. Some of those might be in carriers that just popped. So to Isengard will need to go back. You will need some time to uh, get those interceptors back exactly in those carriers so he can fight again there's lots of space for many interceptors eight interceptors per carrier 50 interceptors right now in total how many carriers do we have we have 13 carriers so that could be a lot more he really could be pushing those numbers up to i guess 104 if my quick math is correct 13 carriers uh, does not decide not to wait for it instead immediately attacks disruptors trying to shoot some balls as well really not hitting anything very poor disruptor hit so far this game another disruptor does try to get a kill and doesn't really work once again the interceptor count is falling so quickly and the upgrades for hero marine with 3-3 against just a, a 2-1 upgraded carriers you know the, the the traits are obviously good for the protos here but it, it still looks very silly as we just have pure marines and 7-8 vikings fighting against what is it 10 carriers basically phoenix is actually very useful as not only do they tank a lot um which usually especially from the vikings and the liberates which usually would be shot at the interceptors they also do a lot of damage against air units uh just a very tanky unit and only two supply they're quick have good range we see once again phoenix coming in really tanking those shots of those liberators a fair amount no real target fire here by here and we just deciding to completely go for interceptors and there's still only 15 interceptors left at this point so this would be the time to fight for hero marine if two isengard can disengage here it might actually become dangerous for him because his army looks very scary and that's probably what's saving him here because he only has 20 23 interceptors these guys fall quickly they don't do a lot of damage and two isengard's like you know what i'm just going to add a lot of phoenixes here uh, it's more uh, consistent dps rather than the interceptors that die so fast against basically anything that shoots up Hero Marine decides to add more Liberators, more Marines. Orbital floating away. He has so many Orbitals right now. We're at how many? Nine Orbital Commands. So infinite scans basically for Hero Marine, who realizes right now a six space is going up for two Isengard as well. And Hero Marine is attacking. He's like, you know what? I've had enough of you. I think I've been taking decent fights, which, I mean, it has been, it has been equal fights so far, right? But the army here for hero marine actually isn't that great a lot of it is still in uh production as well and there's a lot of phoenixes here on the map which will be able to deal with these liberators and with these vikings so so well a lot of interceptors alive 45 right now a couple of disruptor shots, the shots finally hitting something and here hero marine gets completely cleaned up by two isengard all of the interceptors basically disappeared still 13 phoenixes remaining this is what i was talking about earlier if you lose a fight against phoenixes you're going to lose everything on the retreat as well as their speed and their their range they're so good at picking stuff up and here we have once again 36 37 interceptors so not really enough for a proper fight but i don't think there's going to be quite a proper fight in the next minute minute and a half as the hero marine needs to get an army a fighting army back uh, and during that time the interceptor can still continue to build up to isengard decided to only switch into phoenix from now just mass phoenixes um, keep some of those disruptors alive try and shoot some shots there we go a couple of marines dying usually that's not what you want to hit with disruptors but in this case it might actually be fine as the carriers are moving forward 50 interceptors on the map as well as 21 phoenixes putting in some massive work onto those vikings lifting mines lifting marines basically anything that moves gets lifted and interceptor count isn't dwindling carriers actually not focusing on the fight but casually just targeting uh, this armory going down probably not the most important thing at this point but here marine dropping below 100 supply and loses to the skytos army of not only the brilliant but also beautiful to isengard yeah. quick beautiful game so if you did like that please uh, subscribe to this channel as well i'll be uploading here every single day or almost every single day please hit the like button and leave a comment down below if you have any suggestions for which games you want me to cast or which series you thought were cool or like hey i want to uh, have hearthstorm shine his light on that so be sure to do that and uh, i'll probably get to it thanks everyone for watching see you boys tomorrow bye bye